Welcome to Board Ghost, a story broadcast with Games as the Engine. If living is a highway, then heaven is a bus stop. Been waiting for a minute there, but has it been forever? We believe you're out there, hungry for stories for shared experiences. Can't see you, can't hear you, yet we will play for you. This night's offering is Fiasco, a continuation of our game, Fortune and Glory. Dun, dun, dun. Our humble players, myself, John Holt, with me. Ken Breeze. What's up, Board Ghosts? Yvonne Hartung. D. Gailey. Yay, welcome All back, right. D and Yvonne. So before we get into our game, let's go around and walk through who our characters are. Yes. Yvonne, why don't you start us off? Who are you playing? I am Calliope Traeger, a, an adventure seeker who's left the life of academia to um, pursue fortune and fame, potentially, and who has become overly obsessed with her next-door neighbor, Jack Stone, because of the way that he shut her out immediately after meeting her <laughs> and has decided that she that he has a way of helping her ultimately find this holy artifact. In... That's right. Yes. That's right. Because as part of that uh, adventure seeking, you're part of a professional partnership called Prestige Worldwide with my character, Udo Krieger. Udo Krieger is a a man of the world. He He basically has no nation of his own, even though he's from Germany originally. He left Germany before World War II to pursue technology and different fields. And he has now uh, found himself searching the world for lost artifacts to also garner fame and fortune. Currently, he is searching for a very specific artifact called the Holy Mirror of Truth, or something he calls the Veritas. Uh, He has an old buddy, uh, an old friend that he knows from uh, the wartime, uh, that he has um, a sort of a a romantic relationship with, though they're both really in denial about it. Um, And they have had dealings with the mirror in the past. And that is John's character. All right. So I'm playing Dr. Hans Fug. He is a German who did not sympathize with the Nazi cause, but he was a scientist working on V2 rockets and slipping information to the enemy. He was eventually found out and put in a POW camp where he was tortured. That's where he spent some time with Udo. Yep. And he has since been extricated from Germany post-World War II before the Russians could get their hands on him and has been making rockets and spy planes for the U.S. in the desert. Thanks to... Thanks to his uh, his extractor and handler, Jack Stone. Yes, and so I'm playing Jack Stone. He is uh, a freelance photographer. He has a... Quote, unquote. Yes, that is is his cover. (laughs) Because ever since being behind enemy lines with Dr. Fuga, he has heard about this uh, mysterious and holy artifact um, and has been trying to find a way to get it because ultimately um, he wants to gain ultimate power. He needs it. He needs it. He needs it. So behind his secretive exterior, he has this need to acquire this ancient and mythical artifact to basically use against the world for ultimate power. Well, I'll run through our grid one more time and we'll get into Mm -hmm. play. So between Calliope Traeger and Udo Krieger, there is a professional relationship, adventure seekers. And there's also a location, South America, the streets of Rio during Carnival. Between Udo Krieger and Dr. Hans Fug, there's a romantic relationship. Old friends in romantic denial. There's also an object between them, a mysterious and holy, holy mirror of truth. (laughs) And between Dr. Hans Fug and Jack Stone, there is a war relationship. Behind enemy, enemy lines in their uniforms. And the need to get ultimate power by turning the ancient mythical powers of the artifact on the world. Between Jack Stone and Calliope, there is an odd relationship, a nosy neighbor and a secretive person, and the need to get out of this one-sided relationship. (laughs) Uh, So there are two tilts on the table since the the end of Act 1. Failure, fear leads to a fateful decision, and innocence, misdirected passion. Calliope, you are up first in Scene 1 of Act 2. This happens right after Udo and Jack Stone go off 
one way and Hans and Calliope go the other way. On the streets of Rio. On the streets of Rio. During the carnival. During the carnival after just beating some CIA butt. So they, they're they running, they're running, and all of a sudden Calliope can't run anymore because she realized that one of the CIA agents has cut part of her leg. And luckily, they have doctor, <laughs> a doctor with them. <laughs> exactly. Their, their personal physician is with yes, you. Yes, their personal physician is with us. And so Calliope panting and realizing that like there's no way that she can run on her leg without it being treated in some way just calls out, Hans, you have to help me. Ah. And he turns around and rushes back to you. Come on. And he gets you under gets you on one shoulder mm-hmm. kind of thing and helps you hobble quick into this alley. Duck into an alley. Za alley. <laughs> Za alley. Das alley. Yeah. Ooh. Da alley. <laughs> da alley McBeal. <laughs> But you- that's, yeah. Dare is non gendered, right? No. Uh, yeah. It's masculine. Yeah. So, yeah. Dare Ali McBeal. <laughs> <laughs> Odd. This alley is named yeah. McBeal. McBeal Street. All right. <laughs> Sounds American. Uh, so, I, I bend and, like, I take some, like, scrap of rag out of my bag and mm-hmm. start binding your wound. Uh, they got you good, girl. It's a good thing that you're with us. I didn't, at first I was skeptical about the need of a a personal physician, but now I'm really glad that you're here just on personal health and all of that. Is that how Udo sold you on my my joining your little adventure? Is is that not the true nature of your relationship as doctor and... (laughs) (laughs) He he has often needed medical help. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> did you help I, I've heard about his hand and how you mended his hand did you help with his feet as well uh, you could see he was running pretty well I hope I did a good job there wasn't much to work with in the camps yeah well then you're obviously a miracle worker so well, lucky for you I am or you would have bled out this is quite a deep gash you got yeah, I didn't realize that the one guy was holding a knife while I was kicking at him I suppose yes I don't I, I have had much run-ins, me and Jack, with the CIA, but I don't know that these are the regular the regular uh, spooks that you would normally find yourself working with. Why would the CIA be trying to track us? I feel like this artifact maybe is more than what I've even read about. Do you know anything about it? How does this go? <laughs> <laughs> For Kirkliff, a trigger. I say it goes badly. Goes poorly uh, for poor Calliope Trigger. The doctor like looks at, like softly on you and is about to speak when he's tackled by the <laughs> CIA. <laughs> um, and that's you, damn Nancy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sort of. They say they say that, but there's also like drops of act fooder. You know that there's no need to play the American around this old thing. Get the girl. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We're dragged off. We're dragged off. Yeah, dragged off. So Hans and Calliope are dragged off. So me and Jack Stone hanging out. Uh, we're still in the alley. We pick back up there, uh, and I say, "We must get to my safe house. I know uh, my equipment must be in place by now. There are readings and data points I must get to." Yes, we we have to find that artifact, right? Well, of course. The artifact you're looking Do you, for. Are you armed? Uh, no. <laughs> Very well. Perhaps you should be. It's yes. Very dangerous. Yes, that's true. I thought you were on this mission for security. Uh, he t- brandishes <laughs> the camera in Udo's face. <laughs> I'm uh, the photographer. Ah, I see. Is this light good enough? <laughs> yes, I, I can snap a few a few shots if you want, but but really, you, you it seems urgent that we get back to to the camp to the information. To the information. Yes. Yeah, let us go. Very well. Well, the safe house, it's nearby. It's in a club. A club? Yeah. What What club? It's called the tree house. In Portuguese? Or yeah. Is it an American club? Uh, it, in... uh, it's a Portuguese club. Okay. Yeah. And you know where it is? I do. I've been there many times. All right. Well, we should we should go. These these people seem to be after us for some reason. I know why they're after us. They wish to find what we are looking for. They do. They must. Well, well then have... we have to get there before they do. I, I agree. Let us go. All right. I'm glad you're so committed. Well, I I really wanted to take some beautiful photographs of these these <laughs> You can drop artifacts. these pretenses with me. What do you, What do you mean? I mean that uh, I can see the truth in your eyes. And what's that? That you seek your true self. No, oh, uh, I don't know about that. Oh. 
What else do you think you see in the mirror if not your true self? Well, I don't know anything about that. I'm, I've, I'm, I've heard it's a beautiful artifact, and I'd like to take photographs of it. All right. Well, uh, wherever you're going, I, I don't know if photographs will be appreciated. So be circumspect. What do you, what do you, ah, uh, I see. I see. Yes. I'll do my best. Very good. We uh, arrive. I guess we start pushing our way through the crowds. I'm still dressed up like a, a monkey tux- in a tux- suit, in a tuxedo, rather. And we go to this, like, obvious gay bar. The, all these really hot dudes are there. And it's, like, jamming, pumping. It's this sweet Portuguese gay bar called the Treehouse. And this, that's where we're going. This is your safe house? <laughs> yeah! It's a great time! <laughs> uh, do you not like to dance? Have you not been to the dis- discotheque before? Uh, no, never. You Americans... Where are the information that Inside, we're looking for? Inside, come on! I'll buy you a drink! Uh. <laughs> How does this go for me, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this goes poorly. What? <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Um, I'm, so, I'm like, let's go in, I'll buy you a drink! And that's when the place explodes. And we're like blown backwards. Like, Bwah! Like, yeah, there's just, the whole place is, it detonates. And it's like, yeah, it's just screaming and blood. And smoke and fire, and you and I are just knocked to the ground. Are we separated? Uh, I, we'll figure out. We'll figure All that right. out later. All know. right. Calliope and the doctor are dragged through the throngs of Carnival, kind of against the stream. And we fight as much as we can, and eventually bags are placed over our heads, and we're clocked, and out we go. Uh, we wake up sometime later, when a, basically like goes from black to whew, to a dimly lit, roughly hewn cave, it looks like, like a pretty deep cave lined with crates. And I'm sitting there like we're both tied to chairs and there's no one else around and you're passed out, it looks like. And I kick at you and say, wake up, wake up, young woman. Come on now, wake up. Where, where, where are we? I think, I think we found out artifacts. I didn't, I didn't think it would lead to this. I mean, how do we, I've never been captured before. This is completely, how do we get out of these chairs? You've seen wars. You've seen how this plays out. What do we do? I mean, they know how to tie a knot pretty good. It's not like your, your movies where you can just wiggle your way out. I'm, I'm afraid that we're pretty well caught here. We'll just have to see what they want from us. People come in, and it looks like that they have the carnival masks on of, like, jaguars. They are uh, looking at you guys, and otherwise they're, like, dressed in terry cloth robes that are dark and with hoods and big sleeves, wizard sleeves. They, there are torch lights all around. You're starting to realize as your vision is clearing and you're getting your senses about you that it smells very, very oily in here, and it's very humid and warm. And you're realizing that you are definitely deep in the earth as you're you're seeing that it's it's so warm and humid in here because there's like this bubbling mud it looks like there's some sort of like spring or something like that geothermal thing going on sulfuric exactly sulfuric smell exactly and so uh you guys are are grabbed by the back of your chairs and dragged over to the side of this geothermal mud pit and you hear a thick voice saying where's the mirror don't don't you have it what is what are all those crates over there give us a map to the mirror you... I'm afraid that <laughs> you've caught us out. You see, we thought you had the mirror. <laughs> One of them, <laughs> they, like the guy, like they start like pushing you closer, like they're going to let you go. And they're like, N- enough. Tell us where the mirror is. I have <laughs> suspicions of where the mirror is. I don't have a direct map to where the mirror is. You have to keep me alive in order for me to be able to tell you. And you have to keep him alive, too. They sort of take that in stride and they say, tell us where Jack Stone is. Jack Stone? You know Jack, St- oh, Jack Stone? Do not play dumb with us, girl. Tell us where the super spy Jack Stone is. I knew it. <laughs> uh, so how's this going to go? Jack Stone? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to go good. All yeah, right. It goes yeah. well for the doctor. Okay. They're busy, like, interrogating you. Mm-hmm. And a couple guys have gone over there. The big boss man. They're in your face. And the guy watching me is not watching me carefully or closely enough. And I pop my thumbs ah. because I, after yeah. having them broken a few times, I can yep. dislocate them Easily. pretty well. And I yep. slip my bonds. Yep. And I go, ha ha. They weren't as good as tying knots as they thought they were. <laughs> I reach out and grab the collar of the man behind me and sort of spin and he he hits one of the other guys on you 
and the two of them careen ah! into the, the sulfuric <laughs> bubbling <laughs> mud and just <laughs> sucked in, burning alive, clutching for themselves. And that's mm-hmm. when I go and I sock the other <laughs> guy right in his jaguar face. Ooh. And I start untying you, and we've got to get out of here, Clypey. All right, let's go. Let's let's go as fast as we can to, to Jack Stone and, and Udo. We have to go now and help them. I don't know. If they're looking for Jack, and they don't know where the mirror is, I don't know. Things are getting more confused by the moment. What do you, what do you mean? We just leave them behind? Perhaps it's for the best. Jack very much wants this mirror. I can't do that to Udo. We can't leave Udo behind, if anything. It may be safest if you and I handled this. We kind of did, like, the fade to black mm-hmm. with the explosion, mm-hmm. and then we open up the scene, kind of an extreme close-up on Jack, <laughs> and he's <laughs> laying on the <laughs> ground, <laughs> face up. <laughs> he is unconscious for a second, and then he sort of <laughs> groans and comes to, and he, he half sits up and realizes that he's fallen on his camera, and it's smashed uh... under his arm, and he sort of grimaces and shrugs out of it, and then he... He stumbles to his feet and looks around and sees Udo about 10 feet away on the ground, his, his top hat askew across the, the pavement, and he's got a little bloodied nose, and his he's unconscious. still a little smoldering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the monkey fur is a little... Smells like burned monkey. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it was a real it monkey fur. <laughs> it was real monkey fur. <laughs> One of the monkey paw feet has, like, <laughs> fallen <laughs> off. He's got, like, like a bare foot. There's a bunch of monkeys <laughs> sewn together in a <laughs> yeah, tuxedo. Exactly. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's a monkey tuxedo. What do you think? I was dressed as a bunch of monkeys. monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> with sequins pressed yeah, exactly. into the skin. Yeah, exactly. They were sequins. They were ironed on before they exactly. were skinned. No, it was cool. It's totally cool. This is the 50s. Yeah. yeah. Peter didn't exist yet. <laughs> and Jack stumbles over to Udo's body and, and he kneels over it and, and he shakes him by the, the lapels. He's, Wake up, man. Damn it. He's not, he's not waking up. He gives him a smack. Oh. Wake up. We've got to get to that artifact. Udo uh, comes to and he says, oh, uh, that's the fire. I see it now in your eyes. Come, help me up. He helps him up and they... Shoulder and shoulder. Now, get get us. We have to get to it. You, ha- you have to know where it is. Well, I do have the secondary location, the auxiliary, where the data was poured into. We'll need to get there soon. It's at the top. And he points to, obviously, like the Jesus statue that's sort of <laughs> above there. <laughs> <laughs> then let's go. We've got... We, we don't have time. Obviously, people are after us. We have to go. The black box is there. And... I will just need a monitor to plug it into. A monitor? Mm. What, what do you mean? What do you? What is that? Uh, well, uh, let's see. I will need to find equipment. Everything's been destroyed, but the uh, the information is is should still be available. Damn it, man! You better know where this thing is. Mm, I do. Oh, I do. Come, come, follow me. I will show you. And they limp. They limp off. Oddly enough, on on. Uh, Udo is Krieger seems to be in like hail and hardy. He's not limping. Oddly enough, I mean, he's in the sort of mid forties, but he he seems to be super just healthy and vi- full of vitality. Yeah, he's running around. He's 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 yeah. He's more maybe helping Jack. Yeah. How does this go for us, you guys? I'm gonna say it goes well. Ooh, wow. Cool. Right. Gonna, so what is yeah? What does that mean? For, what does that mean? All right, so then Udo does in fact have a secondary location. You get with, to the to the Rio, yeah. Jesus over Rio. Yeah, the Jesus over Rio. Yeah, and they're able they they find pop off its head. <laughs> yeah, right. <exactly. laughs> <laughs> and Udo pulls out a black box. We we break it. We break into an office. Okay. We break inside into the, yeah. Or... We break into an office. We break inside into the tourist Jesus. office. I think in Jesus' is foot. <laughs> <laughs> we break inside that office and there's like a computer terminal in there or whatever, like, you know, like a screen yeah. that we plug it into real quick. And you can you can read this. You can you can see where this yeah. this goes to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, where is it, man? Well, you like put in a couple more punch cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 If this is correct and my it's, calculations it's, are it's, correct. It's like printing yeah. it out like a ticker <laughs> tape. <laughs> These coordinates say the mirror should be... Uh, at the ruins de la Cruz, outside of town, the perhaps an hour away. Well, is it walking distance? Do we do we need transportation? Finding a car at this time in Rio may be crazy. I suggest we get horses. Let's do it. Very well. I know a wonderful ma- young man who who is a stable hand, and he takes care of horses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we get a couple of, of healthy-looking donkeys. 
Yeah. <laughs> Take us up. That's right. We go off into the hills in our donkeys. <laughs> so we're we're running as fast as we can to to go to our the next checkpoint would be. So we start running up to the Jesus statue and mm-hmm. we're running and I'm trying to go as fast as I can with my with my leg and it, even though it was mended a little bit it's still making me go a little bit slower especially up a up a hill like that and I turn to you and I say we'll we'll run into them surely we will we'll we'll run into them here like we they they knew that this was the next place to go it'll be all right I think we are going to have to try to find a way to get there before them before them it's maybe the only way I don't, Jack is a very passionate man, and Udo is a very reckless man, and the pair of them together, I, I don't know, Calliope, come on, let's go, and I, again, put an arm under yeah. you, and we're maybe increasing our speed by <laughs> half as much more again. All right, so we get up to, to the foot, where the computer lies inside of the tourist office. <laughs> it takes up the entire <laughs> statue. Like, it takes up all foot. of it. Little known fact <laughs> about that statue. That's just a huge computer. It, it's just a big old computer. There's no sign of anyone having been there mm. before us. We have to pick the lock ourselves and get in and start typing on all the things that we type. The thing prints out. <laughs> all right. I, it says we have to go farther into the hills. There's no way that we can possibly, I can't go by foot. We have to take some sort of transportation. Hmm. Perhaps, well, let's go back to the the mouth of that cave. Perhaps those thugs had a, a vehicle. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah? Yes. How does this uh, go? It's going to go, D. Poorly. Poorly, all right. <laughs> We're running out of... Yeah, um, it goes bad for you, Calliope. Oh, no. Oh. How does that, How does that go bad? I think it gets to the point where... We're running, we're running, and all of a sudden, my leg just can't, literally cannot sustain my weight anymore. And you're, like, losing a lot of blood. I'm losing a lot of blood. Like, the, my pant is just wet. My, my, my... Trouser. Yes, my, my, <laughs> my yellow trousers are no longer yellow. <laughs> brown color. Like a brown, bloody, sad color. And so... So you're being dragged through the street, being, like, leaving a blood trail behind you? Basically. I turn to Dr. Fugue, and I say, I think you just have to leave... Me. There's no way I can continue to go on. If you think you need to cut them off at an intersect, or I'll stay here and you come pick me up. This is going bad for you. Well, I'm being left behind. <laughs> okay. So he goes, here, let, let, me, let me fix your bandage. He tightens your bandage mm-hmm. and says, and kind of gets you a stick mm-hmm. and says, you need to stop and rest when you can, but you need to get back to town or you might lose your leg. Okay. And he heads back on into the woods. Okay. He goes towards the cave. Then let us return to Udo and Jack Stone. They were on donkeys going into the jungle. They have arrived at the ruins of De La Cruz. And uh, it's very dark there. So I think that they have like some um, uh, torches, uh, if you will, uh, some flashlights. And they are sort of looking around and, and sort of entering into these sort of stone ruins. I think there are stone ruins that are sort of littered around sort of a, a, a central sort of ruin, uh, a, a large sort of um, almost like pyramid structure. And so we haven't gotten there yet, but we're just walking through the jungle and we're almost there. And I say, well, I did not think it would be you and I together looking for this Jack Stone. But now that we are here, why do you seek the mirror? I told you I want to take pictures of it. Of course, now I can't without my camera. But So, I've... I guess you can go home then. There's nothing here for you to do here since your camera's dead. I've come all this way, though. Obviously, oh. I, must, I must see the artifact for myself. Yes, I agree. You should look at it. What do you mean? It is important to look at it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Then I, we're agreed. Let's, we let's continue on. Oh, good. We are. <laughs> Come. And I think we start to realize that we're not alone, that there are other groups of people here with flashlights and they're looking for things. And we may even come upon a larger sort of excavation crew. Like we like sneak up surreptitiously on them and we sort of bypass these guards that we didn't even know were sort of doing things. And as we get closer to the larger pyramid structure, we can hear the sounds of hammers and drills and power sort of saws and stuff like that. And it just looks like there's a big excavation dig going on here. And I look at you and I say, who, is, who are these people? 
Do you know anything about this? How should I know? I'm, I'm here just the same as you. But obviously they're, they're, they're looking for something too. Uh, and we see them carrying around a crate that we're seeing before in satellite photos. Dr. Fugue saw them uh, five weeks ago at this point, I guess. But we see similar uh, crates as those being sort of moved around. It looks like they're being almost like taken out of the excavation site, like things have been packed up and moved away. And we see them sort of being taken to like a makeshift sort of like warehouse It looks like that they have put like tarps up basically on like metal frames, that sort of thing. And they're just storing these boxes there. And I sort of wave you over and we sneak over there. And it's at this point that I pull out a gun from a shoulder holster. uh, And it looks uh, like, yeah, it's like a revolver. I nod and say, let's go inside. All right. All right. We go inside uh, the warehouse. I say, no, you first. You have the gun. Exactly. So you have to go first. I point the gun at you. No, no, you first. He narrows his eyes at you behind sunglasses. Yes. He still has. <laughs> behind sunglasses. All right, old man. Mm. Now yeah. we understand each other a bit more, Jack Stone. Yes, I think we do. Very good. Go ahead. And he turns around <laughs> and goes forward. All right. I pick up like this uh, this clipboard that looks like it has papers on it, like a manifest of everything that's in here. And I'm sort of like thumbing through it for a second. And I say, okay, yes, yes, here it is. Box 22X. Come, let's go look at it. So while come, go ahead. While come, come. Udo is is paging <laughs> through this manual, Jack Stone reaches into the pockets, the inner pockets of his uh his tackle vest, yeah. and pulls out a combat knife. Combat and, knife. And and as Udo, you know, tries to catch his attention, he whirls around and holds the blade towards him. All right. And, and tries to get <laughs> the location from the book. How's this going to go? Yeah, how does this go for Udo? I think it has to go bad, right? It has to go bad. we got to keep our options open. (laughs) So it goes bad for Udo. So as the knife spins, he fires his gun. He's he's scared by that. And as he fires, he he misses, but he shoots the lantern. uh, And so it like shatters basically in this oil. uh, oil. Exactly. So this oil lantern shatters everywhere. So fire is starting to rain down among us. And the people around have heard this gunshot go off. So shouts are starting to go off. In uh, Russian. Exactly. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I, I yell out, you'll never get the mayor, Jack Stone, never! The sun is setting. It's getting pretty dark. And Calliope is pale, pale, like hanging off of this makeshift crutch. And the, the town is pretty far away. Like it seems she's just more and more worried that she's not going to get anywhere. And she hears footsteps behind her and looks back and there are men in jaguar masks coming down the street (laughs) and so she starts hobbling quickly as fast as she can closer she can get to these like sounds of life and carnival just as these men are about on her a jeep pulls up between the two (laughs) and spins out And kind of stops right between the two and get on, girl. It's Hans in a jeep. <laughs> it's Hans. <laughs> they left that jeep. I don't know how to drive this thing very good, though. I need your help. All right. So she jumps in and pushes him over so that she can drive, presumably. Yeah, makes sense. She knows how to drive with her. She's not. a feminist. She's a feminist. Exactly. And These guys have good equipment. Get us out of here. And I, I pull out a like a first aid kit too mm-hmm. that was in the back of the truck, and I pump you full of adrenaline and morphine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I get I get some morphine, take some like this super glue powder, and mm-hmm. sprinkle that on the wound, and like seal it up. Super glue powder. Yeah, dude. World yeah, War. That's yeah. where yeah. super glue came yeah. from. I read about that yeah, in a book. True. It's true. Yeah. Um, and I get, of course, I get my hand stuck to your leg for a bit and I have to like pull it off. Mm-hmm. Super Ow! glue disasters. And off, and we tear off through the woods. Mm-hmm. I've got a mental map in my head. I look at a lot of pictures so I can kind of guide us. There's one point where we basically like, um, like we're, it's this thing where like you're seeing POV of the car with us like going like, ah, and you know, there are like people jumping out of the way in all these festive costumes as we kind of cut across Carnival. A woman like gets you know, humorously knocked off of her float or whatever and exposed and like <laughs> titillate, titillates the audience a little bit. <laughs> Hi. Uh, and so, and as we kind of clear that though, a couple more of these Jeeps come up behind us and start taking pot shots <laughs> as we wend our way through the city and out towards the outskirts and into the trees mm-hmm. and trying to find a road. I think this goes very well for you. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Your expert driving Mm -hmm. and my ability to kind of know where we're at 
keeps us moving forward. And it's almost like we're two mind, we're one mind where I go Indeed. left, left. And that mm-hmm. left just so happens to like, you kind of cut it hard and mm-hmm. pull back. And, you know, the one of the cars goes careening off a cliff yes. right past us because they couldn't stop in time exactly. and you zip forward. Calliope triggers true mm-hmm. adventure instincts take over. <laughs> yes. My father was a race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we lose our, through like a, a harrowing series of night driving through the jungles. Our, our car has got like bullet holes and the windshield is all shattered off. And we're white as sheets because it's still really dangerous. <laughs> and you'd lost a lot of blood. And, <laughs> and we finally pull up, like our, our last attacker explodes, you know, in the jungle behind us. And we pull out of the jungle and you kind of come right up to the edge of this excavation pit and it's all lit up. There's some generators with some floodlights and stuff. And, and it looks like and, something might be on fire. And there's a, <laughs> and we, we get there just in time to see this like makeshift canvas tarp tent go and see all these people running like ants towards it. Now's our time to cut over there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Nice. All right, Jack Stone. The first time that Udo fires the gun, Jack dodges behind some of the boxes. And having seen the location of the artifact, he's making his way towards it. And so the when the gas lamp explodes, sending nearby things into flame, all of a sudden there's smoke. Um, so he covers his face with, with one arm and he's coughing as he, as he runs his way through the series of boxes and, and locations. And he is dodging around, you know, burning brands and, and, and smoke. And he gets to the location from the manuscript, and there is a crate. It's about eight feet tall, rectangular. This is this is the crate that he's looking for. So he's got the, the combat knife in one hand, and he wedges it into the boards between the the crate, and he, and he quickly wrenches the, the knife, and the front of the crate falls away. And in, inside is a tall, sort of gray, dark gray, reflective mirror. There are a pair of holes, actually, within it. Um, they're about a foot apart, about eight inches, um, circular holes. He pauses for just a second, just kind of taking in, in this miraculous object. And then, reaching forward, he places his hands into the two holes and steps into the mirror. And it, it kind of slurps down, yes, over <laughs> over his form and covers him with this like silvery dark gray material. And I think it's going to go badly for Boy, you. Boy, <laughs> Boy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think maybe the aftermath because I like that that random element. So now oh. we're so that's the end of our scene. We're gonna go to our aftermath. Everyone rolls the die they got. A black two. Black two. Okay. Brutal. Wounds that will never heal. Oh, perfect. Mm. For starters, stuff sawed off, blown off, or burned off from your grand ignominious failure. Kiss whatever you care about goodbye. You may die, but you may not. Negative 10, a black 10, as it were, which is pretty good. All things considered, you're coming out of this smelling like a rose. You're a little better off. Maybe you got the girl, or maybe you just didn't get caught. All so right. Pretty good. So I have a white tie. I have like a, what, 13. Fan fucking tastic. It's fat times ahead, safe and secure. That thing that would make your life better, oh, you got it, absolutely, and then some, and then some more. Enjoy it. And Jack Stone has a white one. Dreadful. You are certainly dead, probably from a self inflicted wound. People you care about are also probably dead, maybe through your own stupid, ugly failure. To say that you fucked up is an insult to fucked up didness. You have redefined the term. So now we're going to go through and montage. This is the aftermath. It's this going to jump ahead a little bit. Sweet. To Calliope being back in the States. She has to go to the doctor. There's no way on earth that she can't go to the doctor, despite all of Dr. Hans's best efforts. And she's in a, a white paper, well, not paper because it's the 50s, a white gown. And they're just, we have the doctor, she finds out from the doctor through these sad, sad eyes that they have to remove her leg um, <laughs> from the knee down. As she's thinking this, she's thinking about how all of her future dreams of adventuring have to be over. There's no way she can possibly continue to adventure in the way that she would like to. And that she might have to possibly go back to the stacks of the library 
where she felt like her life was going to end before. We are going to go ahead and go back to the burning warehouse where Udo stumbles upon the dull gray mirror. His eyes widen as he sort of stutters, I see you again, so beautiful. And as he looks into it, he sees his reflection. The reflection he sees, though, is not himself, not his vital strapping body, but instead the body that he truly should have, the body that he was meant to have after the war, broken feet, broken legs, confined to either some sort of uh, chair or, or crutches or something like that. And as he looks at that reflection, he steps into the mirror himself and the reflection stumbles out, all uh, destroyed and disabled. So this is flashing pretty far back into, this is this is back in the POW camps. It's another like torture scene. Udo has been dragged back from being tortured and, yeah. and the doc- feet. Yeah, he's... He's, you know, before I can even set your arm, I'm dragged away myself. And this time they put me, they sit me down in a room that I've never been in before. And they say, there is one final way to get the truth, good doctor. And they pull the fabric away from this giant no, mirror. the mirror! We return to the, just before Jackstone has opened this crate. Um, and this time we're looking through the surface of the mirror out as the front of the crate falls away and you see Jack Stone step up to it but you see um, in a close up on his face his eyes are closed as he places his hands into the holes in the mirror as if um, he knows exactly what to do and he steps into the mirror and he is covered in this dull gray material and with his eyes closed you see he sort of sucks in a deep breath and then he starts to laugh. Uh, Hans and Calliope have just torn up to the the arc, the dig, this big flash of fire coming out, and they she realizes that this is their chance to get into another version of the cave and to cut off into it. So she starts driving over to around the other side, away from the flames and away from where everyone is is running. And she turns to Hans and says, "You have to go in. You have to go in and and help." I just, I feel it. Like, Udo, something is, is very wrong, and they're in there. I don't know. It could be too late. She decides to just, she starts, she despite the fact that her leg is very wounded, she starts running toward, down the cave and into the rabble and sees sees this, the, the, this mirror just, like, shimmering as if something had just, like, a, a pebble had just been tossed on it. Yeah, uh, my broken body is in front of the mirror. A bunch of Russian soldiers rush up to me and grab me by all my limbs and start to tail- take me away as I'm going, No, no! You're saying, you're reckless. This is foolish. The doctor jumps out of the Jeep as well and rushes down the cave and follows, kind of comes out on the on the field uh, at the bottom of this excavation where there's the flaming warehouse and comes up right beside Calliope who's staring at this mirror, but he's looking at the, as the flames envelop and that start to like fall, there's this metallic figure walking towards them through the flames. So I think this is going to be a flashback to Jack Stone He is in some sort of library, and he has this tome in front of him. It's a giant book. It's illustrated in sort of like 1600 style, and he's he's gently turning the pages, and he comes to a passage which is seems to be in Latin. There appear subtitles on the screen that basically say that's describing this mythical object, this this holy mirror that when looked into can provide the the truest vision of oneself. But if one were to not look into the mirror, one were, would be able to take the power of the mirror, using the truth within to influence great power upon the world. And you see Jack kind of look over this this page and sort of smirk to himself and then close the tome. Calliope has just seen this ripple on the mirror and sees Udo being tackled by Russian soldiers and ultimately try, takes the cane that she has and starts trying to wail on one of the on the one of the Russian st- soldiers, but because her leg is so hurt, 
she is ultimately overpowered and thrown into uh, with a bag over her head into another one of the the big jeeps um, oh. outside. Udo is seeing Calliope being beaten. He's like, no, it's like his, his not his. His, his, his partner, you yeah. know, his, his, his mentee, maybe to some degree. Uh, he's like, no, no. And then he sees uh, uh, Hans from afar. And he's all, no, no, my love, no. He realizes that he loves Hans and he's crying as the soldiers are just taking him away. And he basically just sees his loved ones for like the last time as he's like dragged away by Soviets. This is sort of like, this is flashing back again to the mirror is like shining on his face. All Like all of the officers have like, they're covering their eyes. They don't want to see in the mirror and they're being very careful. And Hans is just frozen looking at this thing and he smiles and a peace comes over him and he just starts laughing. And it really upsets the soldiers who just start beating him and you just hear him laughing and laughing as they beat him and beat him. And then we cut back to present and he sees this mirrored figure walking through the flames towards him and he cracks the same smile. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so then we come back to the future and this metallic gray figure advancing on Mm. Hans and the, the Russian soldiers and he is just striding forward full of this kind of dark energy and he's laughing and saying, you fools, you fools, at last the the truth, that I have the truth and I will use it to destroy all of you. And uh, uh, you see him him putting his hands to to his stomach and he throws back his head and this black fire spews out of his mouth <laughs> as it, as a as a dark flames are engulfing his body and it's sort of like this this bright kind of black supernova that that comes out of him and envelops him all around and the metallic figure uh, collapses and evaporates basically into charcoal dust on the ground okay. after Calliope has been dragged to the jeep all of a sudden this big boom happens and they're no longer right there but it's enough of a, of a jolt that the jeep turns over and Calliope is sent flying and luckily she's able to catch herself well enough from all of her adventure seeking she's very good at flying through the air <laughs> and she ducks and covers and is able to hide herself amongst this like undergrowth in in the jungle as the Russians try to figure out what that big sonic boom was. Awesome. Uh, For my final scene, we flash forward to uh, the 2016 election where (laughs) uh, Udo is like in this sweet, like hyperbolic chamber in Russia and he's like feeding them all this information about mirrors and about all this future shit. And they're like just controlling like all these different elections all around the world. And they're just using all the stuff that they've they've been learning from this mirror and from Udo for all these years. The the good doctor strides past this burnt out shell. He whistles and a group of soldiers comes up behind him and he gestures and they they lift the the figure with these special gloves and they follow him back toward like through the burning crates and put the figure back on the mirror and the mirror <laughs> closes back up again and he says hmm, it all worked just as I had thought now for the second phase of my experiment and for the final scene we start out with a wide overhead shot of a residential area and the camera falls down over over this house um, we see it's like a fine house next to sort of a, a, a ramshackle sort of little abandoned building and as we zoom in we start to see over a garden. And as we get closer, we realize that what once was a beautiful garden has turned brown and oh. and and dead. And we zoom in even farther to to a beautiful what used to be a beautiful patch of gardenias. Yes. And oh. we and we zoom in on this single sad dried gardenia with one sort of petal left. And as we watch, the petal falls to the earth and it fades to black. And that's our fiasco. Ooh. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yes, <laughs> way to end it. That was, that was very it's nice that, day in the day. And then it goes further where it's Calliope's yeah. in the window of a yeah, dirty right? window in her wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. For the tears, yeah. she watches the film. <laughs> oh my God, Daniel. <laughs> the murder wall. <laughs> the murder wall. <laughs> <laughs> no. Jack Stone.
Jack Stone. <laughs> Nicely done, gang. <laughs> yeah, good one, everybody. <laughs> Woo. With that, our story ends. We will return again with a new tale to spin to dare to entertain. I was one of your players, John Holt. You can find me on Twitter at Lord Joho and on Instagram at board underscore ghost. Ken, where can people find you? Hey, everybody. It's me, Ken Breeze. You can find me at my website, burlingsbeard.com. You can find all the cool things I'm doing there, including this podcast, Twitch channels, adventures I write, uh, all the DMing I'm doing everywhere. Find me. Say hi. would love to hang out. All right, Yvonne, where can people find you? People can find me at teamawesomerobot.com. And I lied last time. You can go to Team Awesome Robot on, on Instagram and see what's happening with the theater stuff. Cool. There. Anything <laughs> anything happening over the summer with um, Team Awesome Robot? Lots of planning for a potential um, fundraiser of Drinking and Dragons in Ooh. the fall again. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. All right. And, and Dee, where can people find you? And I'm Dee Gailey. You can find me on Twitter at MixNerd, M-X-N-U-R-D. All right. Gang, thanks again for playing. It's been a blast having you yeah, all along. Thank it's you. awesome. Thanks. Yeah. So to learn more about the players and the engine in our story, visit boardghost.com. You can attempt to pierce the veil and contact us at Board Ghost World on Twitter. Shout out through the ether if you have desires we can fulfill. Leave reviews and comments on iTunes, your preferred listening portal, and please take a moment to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest episodes. We like to thank Pat Couples for our theme song and interlude music. You can find more about Pat at patcouples.tumblr.com <laughs> or on his band's page, hotelsandhighways.com. If you're not alone in the void, share our stories. The more they are consumed, the truer they become. Dying, you're agree with me.